what's up? This is Coach Stokes, Stokes House Boxing Academy. You got to stay ready so you ain't worried about getting ready. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Coach Stokes, Stokes House Boxing Academy. You got to stay ready so you ain't worried about getting ready. And we definitely have staying ready with today's special guest. I'm going to let you know who I'm talking to today. He's originally from Ghana, Africa. Certified boxing coach. Muay Thai title holder. MMA title holder as well. Man, this cat got a lot of on his, a lot of things on his pedigree. He's a national kickboxing champion, a very recognized kickboxer from West Africa. Um, he he has his crew belt and certification from Thailand. Um, some of the people that you might know from the country of Ghana, great fighters: Azuma Nelson, Ike Corte, Joshua Klati. You know, Clement Clement Corte, who's the first person ever in uh, the history of Ghana to bring back a, a medal, a silver medal in the Olympics. I'm talking to no other than Michael Adam Adomico. Did I pronounce that right, brother? I hope I didn't but butcher your name. Uh, you did, you did, you did. You tried. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing great. Hey, man, this is our second interview together, so I just want to jump into it. Um, tell everybody your background, where you come from in Ghana, you know, and, and, and how'd you get into the, the sport of uh, combat sports? All right, guys. So, um, so like, um, my brother, Chris Stokes, has already in introduced me as uh, Michael Adum Adum And um, as you already know, I'm from Ghana. So, how did I, I get into to boxing? Yes. Especially boxing and kickboxing in the whole. So, from, from where I, I, I come from, you, I mean, I, I'm a, a lot of people don't know that I'm a university graduate and uh, I did a lot of school in my life. My family is more like the schooling type. But then I, I had a different calling. I felt boxing was my thing. So then I had to go through the hard way to, to, to learn boxing. And it's been a rough journey, but it's been a journey worth every sort. And it's been it's been amazing. Uh, the transformation has been amazing. The, the the impact boxing has, has had on my life has been amazing. I mean, I, I I've not done. I I I I wouldn't say I've I've done boxing has helped me in a lot of ways. But I I, I wouldn't say I, I I can be compared to the likes of Joshua Clote and uh, someone else. But then from where from where boxing uh, from from I mean the benefits I've, I've gained from boxing it's overwhelming it's mind blowing mind blowing blind man I, you you said one thing you said that your family is more educated they they lean more towards um, education and I can yeah. I can I can understand that because my family is the same way so me boxing it was like okay they thought it was just some a phase I was going through. But then I, the more and more I got into it, the more and more I love boxing. And then, you know, the more people I, I, I circulated myself around was within the boxing field or the, or, or the fight uh, field. So how was that? How does your family, um, how does your family, I guess my word is, how does your family embrace uh, the, the fight scene when it comes to boxing, Muay Thai? Are they, are, are they on board now or are they still yeah, against? Yeah, now, now they're on board now. I mean, now they realize that we there's nothing we can actually do to just to to pull him back to their own way of getting me back on the right track to get it. So now they realize I'm making a career out of this, and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure they are they're proud of me because I mean I, I I I I'm on your program and it's your program is a, a renowned one and I'm grateful. I'm, I'm really honored to be here. Brother, no, no problem, man. I, I want to talk about um, Ghana, yeah. Africa. Um, they have some. They have, they have a lot of champions that come out of there. You know, when when, when you look at the pedigree, I know you look at somebody. Um, so you got numerous amount of fighters that come out of there, man. Let's let's yeah. see. You got. Uh, I, I looked up world champions that came out of Ghana, man. It was so yeah. many and so many contenders. Um, what made you lean towards? Uh, Muay Thai and MMA, you know, besides boxing. So um, I, apart from boxing, I, I have a background in, uh, in Taekwondo, which I have a, a red belt in Taekwondo. So 
when I, I started doing boxing, I mean, I was pretty good at it. Uh-huh. So my, my coach who introduced me to boxing, he, he, he's, he's one of the old coaches. He's trained a lot of world, world champions in my country. So um, he gave me a very good, strong foundation in boxing. Good. So then I realized, okay, if I, 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 I thought about it, I'm like, if I move to Muay Thai, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of advantage because mostly the guys in Muay Thai, they focus only on the kicks and stuff. So since I, I know my boxing, and I, if I get into Muay Thai, it, it's going to be a, a good one. So I, I started doing more Muay Thai in Ghana. Mm-hmm. The first, first few years was a little bit rough, of course. Muay Thai is, is a little bit different from the, the normal karate and the taekwondo. Because Muay Thai is, is crazy. It's more yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah. It is. And I see, and uh, one, one funny thing about the Muay Thai in Ghana is you, you're training with people like like um, over 25 people, 30 to 30 people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, let's say, um, half of them are your seniors, your your your, your the seniors who you, you met there, right? Right. And then the and then the, the coaches they they, they 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 come up with an idea. I mean, it's actually going to happen. They tell you there's a fight happening in Australia, and then we need eight people to go. So from now up, up to the day of, of the fight, we're gonna spar. Whether you're a junior, whether you're a senior. You gotta make sure you 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 you, you struggle to 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 make the the, 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 the the cut. So it it was ruthless, man. It was like doggy dog, <laughs> huh? Is it like yeah, a tr- dog trust me, trust me. So all, all those stuff, it kind of it built us up. It builds it built our confidence up. Sometimes you get home and you have you 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 you, 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 you can't be treated properly. Your your jaw is a bit messed up. Somebody kicked you in the head and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. All, all, all these stuff it toughened us and um, and w- w- when I had an opportunity to travel to, to Thailand to do Muay Thai it was amazing I got to Thailand in my first fight I knocked the, the guy out in in the second round I mean the guy I fought with was hard over you know you know Thailand the guy had hard over and he and, and I, I, I just go into the, the Muay Thai scene not too long ago I've done a, a couple of fights maybe uh, seven, eight so when I got to Thailand, they were like, yo, this is your fight. You're fighting this weekend. I got there, got in the ring. The reason why I'm saying boxing is my lifesaver. I got in the ring. I started doing more time with His first kick on my hand, man, he almost broke my hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> he kicked that hard. Crazy. That hard. Mm-hmm. So the only option I had was to, to box him. Even though I, I, I can kick, but then... You know, you, you can't fight with somebody on his own field. You get it? So I had to improvise. So boxing, when, when I got in the, when, I think round two, when I started boxing more, we couldn't do anything. And then I realized, well, boxing, actually, it's, it's, it was my, my, my way, my breakthrough. It was like mm-hmm. my, my thing. So from that day, I started focusing more on boxing. And it's been really, really good. Let's go back, uh, talk about um, your upbringing, where you came uh, from in Ghana. Um, Ghana is, is, is a place where, you know, you have a lot of history. You have a lot of pride. You know, um, you guys come strong. Mm. How, how difficult is it to get out of Ghana? How, how, difficult, how hard is it? I mean, especially being a fighter. Being a fighter, but my brother... It's really tough because see in Ghana there, there's a place. Um, you see in Ghana, before you want to be a fighter, you you, you got to go to a place they call Bukom. I think the last time you did a, a, a documentary on it, Bukom is where all the great fighters they all come from. It's in a it's in the capital city, so that's where all the, the great coaches are, and almost eighty percent of the youth in Bukom are all. Um, uh, they are they do boxing. Uh-huh. So imagine a, a whole community over over thousands of people, over hundreds hundreds of thousands of people, and they are all all boxers. So the the, the possibility of you coming out of there as a champion is really tough. 
really tough. The struggle there is it's crazy. It's really tough. And then one thing about uh, Bukomis, they normally they, they do a street fight often. So I don't know whether the same thing happens in the US though, but in my country, when there's a street fight, we don't separate. We gather in Bukom, we gather around, we play some bets on it, and then we, we, we coach them. Yo, take your time, do it this way, slip. You get right. it? So that, that's our kind of street fight. And mostly all the street fights are done by ex um, boxers and incoming boxers and stuff. So the hustle, the, the struggle there is really real because everybody wants to have a better life. So they all training hard. Mm-hmm. So before you, you, you come out of there successful, you got to make sure you have a game plan. You got to make sure you're thinking outside the box. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as you, how did you end up in Dubai? Mm. So um, um, I, I had a couple of colleagues. My, my seniors were already in Dubai. So when I traveled to, to Thailand, mm-hmm. um, um, one well, of my seniors, he he had a contact to to a uh, gym was about to open, and he, they said they wanted trainers. But before that, I I had already spoken to, to the guy in the, when I was in Thailand. I had already got in contact with the, the owner of, of the gym, so I was a bit acquainted with him before this whole thing he came up. So yeah, so that, that was how I, I was able to travel to to Dubai for the job. Yeah. Do you um, how do you how do you like it? How do you like the country? Where well, Dubai? Yes. I I, I don't know. I, I think Dubai. I, I I'm not gonna brag, but I think it is the best country in the world. Just me, <laughs> brother. I mean, you know what? Yeah. everybody everybody's treated equally. There's no. I mean, you walk into a shop and you. Oh, I love in Thailand. I love Thailand. It's like beautiful. It's amazing. But one day, I, I was about to. Enter the, the sea for to swim, and there was this. I, 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 I'm not trying to say anything about racism or something, but then there was this, there, there was some white people in the, in the water. I got in there, and they all came out. Mm. Like, well, what's going on? But then I I I I, I kind of understood the whole. You know, sometimes people it takes time for people to just get to that point where they should understand that we are not in the stone the age anymore. You get it. So right, right. If, if you see your fellow human, we all want people just as different colors. If you see me and you want to act crazy, then that's your issue. But over here in this country, it's amazing. Everybody's treated e- equal. I, I, I do want to ask you this because everything that's been going on with the pandemic and COVID-19, how has everything been over in Dubai um, as far as uh, lockdown or what, what have they been doing to enforce the safety of everyone over there? It's amazing. The authorities here, they really, really invested a lot. And you see, in Dubai, the, the law actually works. The system actually works. Like, they, they, they sent a message across that, you know, everybody need, needs to be, before they start the lockdown, they were like, we're going to do a lockdown. They send a message, we're going to do a lockdown. Everyone needs to be in the room at eight. Nobody's mm-hmm. supposed to go out, this and this. They didn't need any police or any military guy around. The only thing they did was they sent a message and everybody listened to it. Got you. And and, and everybody followed through with it. Yeah, that's it. I wish I, mean, I, I'm I, mean, sorry. I, I sorry, I mean in the in the evening around like eight, they, they just send the police patrols around, but they don't do it because they are laws the laws here really work a lot. They are like if they meet you outside and oh, what you do after eight and you can't tell them like maybe you go to the pharmacy or something. They're gonna find you ten down there, which is close to um, I think uh, maybe um, um, two thousand US or something. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, nah. Um, when so the find actually it. works. Yeah, definitely. But now, but now it's all good. Now the now the airline is beginning to work now. Down the malls are being opened now. Now we are. The, 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 the quarantine is up to to 10 p.m. and now there's 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 free movement now. It's like they, they created the awareness first, so uh-huh. now everybody's pre- pretty much aware about what's going on. So everybody's required to wear a mask, but then you can move around to to 10 p.m. It's 
so far it's the best the best way they, uh, they, uh, the approach was it's pretty cool and I like it do you um have you had a chance I mean uh, have you been able to still train or work with any uh, of your your clients or any of your fighters and if so how how have you been doing it or have you been using social media I mean how, how do you uh, stay in contact well, um, I, I, I the thing what happened. I think the benefit I've had from the uh, the COVID nineteen issues it has helped me to adapt to new ways of communicating with clients. Cause you see, I, I I believe in whenever there's a shift in system, you gotta know how to adjust to it. Cause it got to a time, it got to a time the guy who was using the typewriter. Mm -hmm. they, needed, they didn't need that guy anymore. So the guy needed to step up his game and, uh, and get into IT and stuff. You get it? I feel eventually things will change. But, but with respect to the client business and stuff, it's it's a bit slow because people are, I mean, I, I feel we all going to get back to our normal lives sooner or later. But people are, are getting, are not too used to the online stuff too much because trading someone online and one-on-one -on -one is pretty different you 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 got to know your game plan you need to know, know your timing properly you, you got to make sure the connection is good and everything so yeah um so far so good I, i've been a, a, able to to be in contact with most of my clients and then there, there's a lot of events going on i i i even wanted to inform me about that i i, I plan on hosting an event here in the uh, I, I, I want to call it uh, Fujira Fight Night. It's going to be a big event. So if uh, I, I want to host you and your, your 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 kids to come and make a fight here. So. Oh, without you know what? I'm glad you said that because uh, we're going to go international and we're just trying to decide what what country we want to go to first. So we're looking at Ireland, England. We would love to come to Dubai and come to yeah. your come to your house, man, and train. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. do what you do. I want to know this. Um, how 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 has it been when it comes to when it comes to you training? I mean, has it hard has it been hard for you to train, or or you get up and do your own thing? I mean, what do you do? What does your day look like when it, when it comes to you working out? Well, when the the, the pandemic started, it was a little bit awkward because uh, normally I'm used to uh, going out in the morning, going for a run, and coming back, skipping the gym, and working out. But now they're like, okay, nobody should go out, so. I, I I developed an old habit where I do 500 push-ups every day mm -hmm. with squats. 500 push-ups, squats, burpee. I, I do that as a workout every day in my room. So, and then I skip a thousand skips every day. I really? don't consider that. I don't consider that to be part of to be my workout. I see it to be like a daily routine. Your maintenance. No, yeah, my maintenance, a daily routine. I have some, uh, some couple of weeks here, but I see that that particular work to be like a daily routine. But now, since things have eased up a little bit, we uh, I train with a couple of guys in the morning. We, we, we go to the mountains, we run the mountain a little bit, keep fit. We do some pad work and stuff. Yeah. You um, so you 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 did your five hundred pushups already today? Yeah. You already did it. You, how how yeah, long did it take you to do them? Uh, well. Five minute push up. So what happens is that I, I, I time myself. I, I try to do a hundred push ups in two minutes. Okay. Okay. So a right. hundred push ups in two minutes and then I rest for a minute, then a hundred push ups a day again. So you know it, it should be less than fifteen minutes. Really? No fifteen minutes straight. Less than that. So uh, it's two minutes, a hundred push ups, and then you rest for one minute. Okay. And then you go uh, and your hundred push ups again. So in between, maybe like the third, fourth round, you realize you can't really do 100 push-ups. You're going to do like maybe the 80. So the rest of the, uh, the other two minutes, it covers up. So approximately 15 minutes, you should be good. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. I'm, gonna, I'm serious. Should, I'm going to try should. that because I've gotten back into my push-up game. Um, and that's probably the best, best, I mean, best workout that you can do because it's your own body weight. And that's yeah, all you need yeah. to do. I mean, you don't really don't need to lift 
heavy, heavy weight. It's, it's your own body weight. So uh, I'm gonna yeah, definitely, yeah. Try, I'm definitely try that. You said within you 12, 12 minutes. Yeah, fifteen minutes. Fifteen. 15 okay. Minutes. So so try to set the timer for it. So two minutes of as many reps as you can in two minutes, and then you rest for a minute, and then you go again. Got you. Got you. I want to. I want to ask you this. I got a question for you. Um, who is your favorite? Boxer from Ghana. Favorite boxer from Ghana. Uh, 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 undoubtedly, the le, the legend Azuma Nelson. He, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the legend Azuma Nelson. I mean, I, I, I like I, the new book. I like the new ones. I, I like the ones who came after him. Like, like, um, like, um, uh, I I caught it and uh, I caught it. The guy fought with Oscar De La Hoya, and then um. Joshua Crote and uh, King Kong, uh, um, Joseph Agbeko and all those guys. Isaac Dogbo? Um, Dogbo? I, Dogbo, they're amazing. They are, he is. They are he, he top is. notch. They're amazing. They're amazing. But see, one, one thing I feel, I mean, I, I'm not trying to judge them, but then one thing I feel they, they lack, one thing that Azuma had that they, they didn't have was the diehard spirit. The, the spirit of we ain't got nothing to rely on. Mm -hmm. We get in the ring, you see that you kill us, or something. That they, you see that you kill us, or the doctor just says, "Yo, you are not gonna fight again." You get that? And Azuma had that kind of that kind of spirit. He's like, "Yo, this this is the only thing I'm doing for my life. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna put in my all." Have you ever met uh, Azuma Nelson ever? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. He he he's a uh, is the one of the most humble person I've ever met. He's he's just amazing for him to have that kind of pedigree, for him to have that, that kind of recognition by the WB, the, the BBC and all, all, all those the Hall of Fame and everything. And yeah. You meet him and he's he's down to earth. Down to earth. Yeah. I, I hear great things about him. I, I hear he's like a king over there. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, I mean, he he carried the country on his back for so many years, man. He he did so many years. Things, great things. I want to ask you this: you got, I'm gonna give you three people, and you got to choose which one you would like to bring back to life. Mm. All right. So we got Tupac. Mm -hmm. We got um, Malcolm X. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Not back. And then the third one is going to be Man, that's a good one. Third one is going to be Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> hey, man. You, you only can bring one back. One. You, you only can bring one back. So it's two Tupac, Malcolm X, Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle. Hussle. <laughs> I don't know. I I think I'll, I'll I'll bring back Malcolm X. Okay. Malcolm X, probably because I feel two two is he's a legend, but he he's a legend on the west side, the west side. You get it? The west side, and when you bring two two pack back, then what happens to Biggie and his squad? You get it? So, but Malcolm X was for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's how I feel. Um, no, no, dis no disrespect to Tupac. Tupac is a legend, but then Malcolm X, he, I mean, Malcolm, Malcolm X inspired the movement. He, he's part of the people who inspired the whole movement of Nipsey Hussle yeah. and everyone. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Also, I want to ask you this. You're going down a, a steep slope on a, on, a, uh, on a bus, 100 miles per hour, going down a steep slope. Yeah. Where are you sitting at? Are you sitting in the front of the bus, the middle of the bus, or the back of the bus? <laughs> um, well, talking from a, a black man point of view, it's always <laughs> it's always safe to stay in the back seat because you, you, you never know. <laughs> uh, you, you don't want to be in the front. You don't want to, you don't want to look at what you're doing. No, no, I mean. Talking from a, a black man, a black yeah. man point of view, you know, you know, like if I I, I, I was white, 
I, I, I will be a little bit curious to sit in the front. Why people are curious? No way watch horror movies. They want to see. <laughs> they want to see who made that noise and stuff. No, black people, we don't do that. No, no, no. Yeah. We always play safe. So yeah, no, man. I want to see the back seat. So just in case someone, the, the guy in the front seat dies, then right. I'll know how to move out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be seeing videos of uh, people, you know, like uh, like over in Africa, and they be playing with the monkeys and the hyenas. That <laughs> yeah, black yeah. people don't be doing that. Black people don't be doing that, man. They, yo, no, no, wait. You know. <laughs> no, wait, no, 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 You see, if it was left for black black people, man, we're not going to go deep, deep diving with the sharks and stuff. We ain't doing no. that. No, no. I mean, we some cultures do do that, but... I'm not sure we're ever going to invent um, 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 a board, a surfboard with a shark detector stuff on it. We, we ain't got time for that. No, no, no. We are like, yo, allow the sharks to be where they are, and we, we're going to be on, on the land. You know what I mean? Facts, facts. So I want to ask you, I want to ask you, I'm going to go down the line and ask you some, uh, some questions. I want you to just rattle See? off the president goes off uh, between your mind, and I need you to pick. Yeah. So, um, Long hair or short hair? Long hair. Okay. Manicure or pedicure? <laughs> yeah, ask me. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, pedicure would do, just me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, who are you <laughs> listening to right now, yeah, uh, as far as music-wise? Who, who, who do you like? I prefer old school music, man. I prefer the old school G's. I sometimes listen to Snoop, uh, Dr. Dre. I like old school uh, Tupac. I like old school Biggie. I think the old school they kind of they kind of speak more more knowledge to what's happening. Cause the new school rap is dying and that kind of rap. Um, I don't know. It, it sounds cool to just dance to it, but actually, if if you want to learn something from it. I prefer the old school raps. Yeah. I um I, I noticed that uh you know Africa really is coming strong when it comes to uh when it's coming to dance. We we've always been that way, but when it definitely when it comes to music, they really are on the scene, man. So are there yeah. any African artists that you uh, listen to that you like? Yeah, I do. I I listen to to Sakode. I listen to the video. I listen to um, Benna Boy. I listen to Whiskey. I listen to uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good flavor from Nigeria. Yeah. I listen to Shatawali from Ghana. I mean, I mean, we, 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 we've always had it. Africa has always had it. So. Okay, you um, you are about to get ready and 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 have your last fight, your last fight of your career, and you can fight anybody, past or present. Who would you pick to fight, and why? Again, please. Sorry, my bad. Again, I said you better have your last fight, your last fight, boxing match, yeah. your last mm-hmm. fight. And they ask you who you want to fight. It can be past or present. It can be anybody. Who would you like to fight? Um, it could be anybody. It could be yeah. Mike Tyson. It can be Van Holyfield. It can be anybody. <laughs> Wait, this is what I, w- I would w- want to win the fight. Oh, yes, just someone you want me to. Okay, I get, Who would you like I, to fight? I, I get. Who would you like to fight? I mean, whether it was past, present, anybody, anybody that you would like to fight, that that you would like to get in there, just to just to say, like, like for me, mm. I would have loved to get in there with. Um, I don't know. I would love to get in there with Pernell Whitaker just to see how it would have been. You know, um, or or uh, yeah, yeah. Heavier, Mike Tyson or Evander Holyfield. Mm, 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 mm. What about you? I think I I love to be in there with my, my Mike Tyson. Like just to just watch how he moves around. Mike Tyson and uh, and and the, and the legend himself, Ali. So Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. Mike, have you seen Mike lately? He's looking good, huh? He's, he's looking good. I, I hear that he. He, he posted a story on his. He posted a, um, um, on his Instagram that he, he has a fight coming up. 
Really? Wow. Yeah. A charity fight, yeah. I hear. I hear it's a charity yeah, fight. Yeah, charity fight, yeah. You know, I think... But tell me, what do you think about it? Do um, you think it's, he, he's, he's, he's fit enough to come back? I, I think... Mean, age, I, that does play, age does play uh, a lot of factor. But we had a, a coach me meeting here, and a fellow, uh, a, a fellow coach was asking me, yo, what do I think? I'm like, yo, he's 53 years old, and you got to understand that Hitting pads. Yeah. If, if you've done boxing a lot and you know more about boxing, you have a lot of knowledge about boxing. It's not just like you wouldn't make this kind of boxing, but a lot of knowledge about boxing. Hitting pads and fighting the ring is two different things. Without a doubt. Yes. Without yes. a doubt. So he may hit pads correctly, but then a 53 year old in the ring, I don't know. But hopefully he still, he still might. That's it. You know what? The key word is charity. So that means like not personal, not going out and try to kill each other. I mean, just put on a, a good show. So it depends on who they get. Um, yeah. I heard Shannon Briggs say that he would like to do a, a tag team boxing match with Mike Tyson. Him and Mike Tyson against uh, Klitschko and um, it was somebody else. It was Klitschko and somebody else. Klitschko and Evander Holyfield, Holyfield, I think. Holyfield no or, or, no or, 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 or Lennox Lewis, one of those guys. But, hey, I, I, think, I, think, I think with the climbing, what's going on, they would pay for it. They, they definitely would. They, people, people would pay for it. Of course, man. I mean, if, if I'm even close by, I'll pay to watch it. But yeah. you know, sometimes one funny thing about boxing is you, you never know. Sometimes you are like, well, it's a charity match. And then you get in there and you get punched in the face. You're like, yo, man. I got a guy who pointed back and it tells you something <laughs> else. <laughs> that, hey, that's, that's, that's definitely right. That's definitely right, brother. Well, hey, I, I want to, um, I want to, before we get off, I want to go ahead and ask you, um, what do you have coming up? You know, you got anything planned? Well, what do you, what do you, what do you have coming up for this next year? I know you, you're coaching, you have any fights, mm -hmm. uh, any expected fights that you want to go into, you know, and let, let the people know. So, um, yeah, I, I have an event coming up in the world in Dubai, a very big event. And uh, I, I want to make it official now, or I want to make it official on the page, because I have not really had the opportunity to make it official on any social media platform, which I want to make you part of that event, which uh, I, I want to bring your family over to, to participate in that event. I want to make, um, oh yeah, I, I want to make an event where I'm, I'm going to call it UAE versus the world. Okay, okay. So fighters in UAE versus fighters over the world. So it's going to be fighters from Africa, US, England, everywhere. Brother, you invite me, we will be there. We will be there. We'll get our Definitely. passports ready. Well, oh, I would Definitely. love to come. I would love to come. You, you, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So um, apart from that, then, um, I have a couple of um, um, events. We, 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 we plan on doing two, a couple of boxing events because now, there's a lot of potential in the UAE, but UAE, uh, even though they, they like sports and everything, they, they, uh, they are getting used to the, um, the whole idea of sports, as in, in terms of the, the violence part of it. I mean, it's not violent, though, but it's is it, is it in the US, from where, in the US or Africa, for, um, people can actually fight on, on the street, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah. o o over here in the UAE, nobody fights. Yeah. You guys, so you don't even find nobody can fight because that you scared the you're gonna you, the police you're gonna you're gonna have um, an issue where you you're gonna have to pay a thousand uh ten thousand euros if you fight. So you're like yo. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So wow. <laughs> street fight no. So the uh so the the people here. Are, even though they love boxing, they want to see it happen. But then it, it will take some time. They get they get in the idea of it. So we, we try to with a couple of friends of my, a couple of colleagues. Of my, we try to just keep pushing the idea. And I think uh, I, I I would like to recommend Badu Jack and um, Abdella on this because they 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 start function and which is making waves. It's pretty. 
pretty good because um, they, they try to introduce world, world class boxing in, in Dubai and it's, it's mm -hmm. really good. Well, Adam, uh, be, be, before we get off and before we conclude, can you let everybody know how they can follow you on social media, how they can contact you if they would like to? All right, guys. So uh, my, my, my Instagram handle is um, Nana, N A N A. N A N A. Sorry, let me start again. My Instagram handle is Nana N A N A underscore K underscore Cage K A G E. And you don't you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna put everything down at the bottom so you can uh, check it out. But you heard that uh, Nana uh, underscore Cage. Um, if you want to follow me, my Instagram is Coach S Stokes. No, that's my uh, that's my uh, that's my YouTube. My Instagram yeah. is Stokes underscore boxing. S T O K E S underscore boxing. B O X I N G. Thank you for tuning in. This is Coach Stokes with my man Adam. I'm gonna talk to you next time. Peace and we out. Peace, guys. <laughs>